And this is what establishment media does not understand about Donald Trump. Yes, I think I think Hillary Clinton said two correct things in her life. One of them was the deplorable line that everybody hates. No, that's totally true. In my opinion, half the Republican base is deplorable. And and I think they are racist, bigots, sexist, etc. We could talk half? about half. Half. Easily half. Okay. But the other half That's forty million people in America. Absolutely. You not believe, even close. You believe that a hundred percent. We could debate it. Okay, but hold on, let me get to the other forty million. Okay. The other thirty six million or so that voted for Trump. No, they're just angry that the establishment is screwing them. And they don't yeah. know how they're getting screwed. They that's exactly hate. what Charlie Kirk said. Right. And that's they're what scorned. And 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 they hate mainstream media and they're right because mainstream media is a factory of lies. So they'll say, "Oh, the status quo is great." For who? Yeah, the billionaires who run those companies and the millionaires who are on air, yes, for you guys, everything's hunky-dory. But it's not great for when wages didn't go up for 45 straight years now because of inflation. They ironically went up a little bit. But for 45 years straight, wages did not go up. Okay, we have no health, universal health care in this country when every other developed, world, uh, developed country in the world has it. We have no paid family leave. We send moms back to the assembly lines and coal mines the day after they deliver. So we have corporate rule in America. And chapter five is about the matrix. And that's mainstream media that lulls you back to sleep. Corporate power is awesome. Corporate rule is great. The lobbyists are innocent. The politicians, oh my God, they're such sweethearts. They're having ideological differences and they're having debates. No, they're not. They're getting checks and then doing exactly as they are told. And that's true of 99% of the Republican Party. And yes, 80% of the Democratic Party at least. Stop. The way you just said it was so funny. So... So 99% Republican Party, 80% the Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, can you pull up the, the chart that just came up? This one right here. Total spending of presidential campaign financing in the United States. They changed a law, I think, in 2019, 2020, that allowed corporate corporations to just open up their checkbooks. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Look at the kind of money we raised for presidential campaigns. From Carter, 197 million, to Reagan, 228 million, to Reagan again, 380, to uh, Bush Sr., 346, to uh, Clinton, 478, to Clinton again, 612, then it's Bush, 891, then it's uh, Obama, I think it's what's that, 1.769 billion, 1.4 billion again, Obama, 1.529 million, Hil Hillary Trump. Boom! $4 billion. Whatever they could to get rid of Trump. They spend all the money in the world to get rid of this guy. They, they figured out ways to say, dude, if we can outspend that guy because, you know, he, he, we can be controlled. So th this is the part where, for me, where we agree and where we disagree. This is, this is the part. Like, I had Ari Fleischer here. You know who Ari Fleischer yeah, is? And, yeah. and I'm like, you know, a couple of the decisions you guys made when you listen to the CIA, and the, I'm like, yeah. I'm, why wouldn't you double verify this? You know, this is a big decision you're making to do this, to do that. Well, I don't know, but we could have done this and we could have done that. And we had Paul Manafort. I'm like, dude, lobbying. Why, why? It's the dirtiest thing out there. And he's like, well, I totally get it. But, you know, him and Roger Stone started the lobbying firm. I don't know what, one of the most powerful lobby firms that they had together 90, 30 years ago, 40 years yep. ago. He said, well, the other, uh, other guy's going to do it. What are you going to do? Sit on the sidelines? Okay, valid point. But I like both sides not to do it, right? However, when you look at it now, and you see the kind of money that's being spent on the left for them to push their agendas over. You set aside this uh, lobby stuff out. You set aside corporations putting money in to who they buy. Like, you know, the joke about Koch brothers. Well, you know, he wakes up and says, what do I get for my birthday? Which president, right? Now it's more the left that's doing that. You got the Soros's. You got the Larry Fink and BlackRock without their ESG score and, you know, State Street and Vanguard. And that thing's becoming a reality where it's no longer about Democrat and Republican. It's truly becoming more about the establishment folks and the anti-establishment folks. 100%. And if we're talking anti-establishment, Jenk, you have to agree on this, bro. You have to agree on this. I know it's going to be tough for you to agree on this, but I, if you don't, give me everything you got, what I say right now. You can't say Trump is an establishment candidate. No, uh, but I can't say he's corrupt. So there's a huge difference, and I'll explain. Okay, fair. Go for it. Okay, so Trump is not establishment. The establishment hates him. You're totally right about okay. that. Okay? And so, Which for guys like us, we like that, don't we? Yeah, but then you have to see, okay, why do they hate him, right? 
And so, number one, he's unstable. So business can't interest, be controlled. And that's also true, though. Okay. That's also true. Okay. Well, no, he can't be controlled because he's so unstable and unhinged. Which right. is a strength, though. In a way, it is an edge you have against your enemy because you're, if the enemy feels they can't control you, dude, we have to eliminate you if we can't control you. Well, okay, now let's talk about that, though. Okay. So now, why do I still say he's super corrupt? And by the way, that stat, those stats you showed are in my book, okay? And I explain why. Once the Supreme Court, uh, activist judges on the Supreme Court, changed the rules, they basically allowed for bribery, okay? They That's insane. They legalized bribery. You, you, I outline it perfectly clearly. And there was a, a guy from the Chamber of Commerce, Lewis Powell, who said we could just buy the Supreme we, we If we get on the Supreme Court, we could buy the whole country. Corporations just can outspend everyone, right? And so, and they did it. Nixon said, boom, you're on the Supreme Court, and they did it in Bellotti, they did it in Buckley v. Vallejo, they legalized bribery. Now, Trump had trouble getting money from normal corporate interests. And I agree, that's normally a good thing, right? So what did he do? He had to go make up the money. So he went and talked to Sheldon Adelson. So Sheldon Adelson is actually, before he passed away in 2021, largest political donor in history. Mm -hmm. He gave $100 million to Trump twice, to him and his PACs in 2016 and 2020. What did he get in return? He got charges, corruption charges in China dismissed against him. To be fair, he's like the Soros of the right. He was like yes. the Soros of the right. Th that's Vegas, right. Vegas, okay. casino, yeah. tycoon, yeah. Sure. pro-Israel. Yeah, he got everything. He's the guy who got the embassy moved. He's the mm -hmm. guy who it, it, repatriating taxes from abroad because most of his money is in Macau, China, because that's where most of his casinos Casino are. Casino business, yeah. And he got that tax that knocked down to 8%. So from 35% to 8%, he made billions off of Trump. And on top of getting rid of the corruption charges and the tax cuts and everything, just as a little tchotchke Trump threw in, Miriam Adelson getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom. His wife. His wife. Yeah. Are you kidding me so trump could easily be bought dude no, dude obama got a nobel prize a month after being a president just for what he was i know but that isn't yeah. about corruption that was just them being silly right, right? Okay. okay so so my a, point is for that a dei score trump is yeah. perfectly corrupt and and can be bought it's just that who's buying him I is the question i don't i don't know so you read the port portion about adelson sure. in my book sure there's no question he did Everything that Adelson asked him. And by the way, I say to the readers, are you sure you wouldn't if somebody funneled $100 million to you and then $200 million to you? I, I, I would. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Look, I, I've given up a lot of money to do the right thing in different por portions of my career. But I haven't seen a lot of other people do that. So my point is that money is intoxicating. It corrupts Trump. It corrupts Biden. And, and by the way, here, I'll go further. I don't know, bro. But I'll, I'll push back on that when you're done. Okay. Go ahead. All right, one last yeah. thing about it. To me, though, look. At, let's look at the flip side yeah. of it. Mainstream media will tell you, oh, the Republicans, Mitch McConnell, when he takes a billion dollars from yeah. corporate interests, he's obviously corrupt. And look at it, he's working for the corporations, et cetera, right? But wait a minute, Nancy Pelosi also took a billion dollars. And almost all from the same donors. So why aren't you calling her corrupt? And everyone in mainstream media says, no, Nancy Pelosi's an angel. Right. And she's a master legislator. So when Mitch McConnell takes a billion dollars, he's a crook. But when Nancy Pelosi takes a billion dollars, she's an angel? No, they're all crooks. That's why we have Feinstein drooling. I'm sorry, but it's reality. In talk. the Senate, yep. Mitch McConnell freezes. He's like, they're all 90 years old. Why? Because corporations know they get a great return on investment no from those people. It. No question. We're on the same page there, just so you know. We're, it, but but here's, here's how I... Uh, uh, gauge who can be bribed and who can't be bribed, okay? So most of the time, you know, like uh, uh, this this Leon Black story, I don't know if you saw the Leon Black story with Epstein where, you know, he paid Epstein $158 million for consulting fees and estate oh, planning yeah, fees yeah, over yeah, a five-year yeah. period. And sure, what do you mean yeah. $158 million <laughs> for you know, those fees? And then story comes out about a 16-year-old girl who was autistic and you know, oh, so, so Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, this story came out. It's pretty wild. So you hear stories like this, and you're like, okay, he was bought. Then, then you watch this video from, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Can you pull up the video clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson? No, I don't know if you have it or not. I, I almost, I almost don't. I'll play this clip here in a minute because I don't want to confuse the two clips. I'll come back to it where, you know, the point is being some people flip their position suddenly where you're like. Why? You you would have never said that. Why are you saying it now? What happened to you? At least with you, where you're at, some people are saying, what are you doing, bro? Why are you not, like, making a couple adjustments, you know, like, but you're like, no, this is all I'm going to talk about, and da-da-da-da-da. Great. So you're not controlled. People may not agree with you, 
but you don't come across as a guy that's controlled, right? They don't have 100%. to like you, but you don't come across as a guy. Now, some will say, well, you took money from Soros in the past. They'll say I all, didn't, the, by the all way. I'm saying to you is yeah. well, they'll say that that's happened, all that stuff. But to me, you're unhinged, you're not controlled, and they don't like people like you, and I totally get it. You could make a couple adjustments to increase your business affairs, but that's to you. You've chosen the, play, the route that you're playing. When I watch a Trump and I watch some of these guys, I'm like, okay, that guy, you can win him over. Just introduce him to a couple of girls. He's good. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to win guys over, right? Yeah. It's typically guys that don't get a lot of play and they're not good with words. They're not good with the ladies. <laughs> you know, hey, go do X, Y, Z to him and he's going to fall for it at a bar. Boom. Hey, here's a clip we got from the room with you. Guess what? Da, 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 da. Can happen to anybody, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So girls is one of the ways of doing it. Attention is another way of doing it. Fame is another way of doing it. You know, money is another way of doing it. Guess what? Trump has had it all. He's had all the girls, one too many sometimes, okay? Some that he was single, some that he wasn't single. He's had all the money. He's been to all the parties. He's got all the letters from all the most powerful people in the world telling them how much they love him. Alec Baldwin, no one ever treated me like this. Oprah Winfrey, you know that book he wrote about all the letters that others wrote yeah, for yeah, him that yeah. now they hate him. Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer used to love me. He used to love me when this, this, that, you know, that whole talk yeah, that he gave. That, with the that, and he's right about he, that part. Yeah. So, But the point is he's had the girls. He's had the fame. He's had the properties. He's been to the parties. He's had the money. How the hell are you going to, like, does he want to be, if he's worth $2.5 billion right now? He's not. Let's just say he's worth, well. He, he's not. He's a total loser. He's almost bankrupt. Well, okay. So you can say that, and that's fine. But you can't say it, he's a loser. But, but, total I mean, loser. But if you say he's bankrupt, you can say that <laughs> yeah. can be your opinion. But, but <laughs> yeah. the last 60 years, or the last 50 years, proves you wrong. Okay. It doesn't. It proves me right. 15 years Apprentice was number one. How the hell are you that entertaining to be number one for 15 years, right? Uh -huh. You know, uh, uh, financially, real estate properties, when you think about a real estate name, brand, you think about one name. You don't think about 50 different names. You think about a guy that's been able to brand himself, you think about Trump. Now, are you going to buy Trump's stake? Probably not. But you're going to buy... <laughs> neither did anybody yeah, else. Yeah, neither did <laughs> but, but the point is, he's had great victories. He's got kids that are doing well for themselves. He's got a daughter that, you know, has so done... Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, that was a different yeah. angle you took. But, yeah. but, but, but where I'm going with this is that's the part where I feel they can't stand the guy because they cannot control him. So for me, when I see, you know, what's going on with them wanting to get rid of this guy, and you're like, look, the big donors don't want to give him money. Look how much money he got. No, he can't raise any money. Nobody wants to give him any money. And look at this stuff. Yeah, but the people that are raising money are the people that are not being trusted because they're part of the establishment, left or right. A lot of people are saying. So that's why guys like RFK are getting some momentum. That's why guys like Vivek are getting some momentum. Because yeah, Vivek's got his own money. RFK's coming out doing some grassroots stuff. So what are your thoughts on this with Trump? Yeah. So first of all, with Trump, look, the guy's got A, insatiable greed. So I don't buy that, oh, he's had enough. He's never had enough, okay? Number two, he's a natural born loser. He's lost at everything except two things. Obviously, he won the presidency in 2016. Yeah, he lost a popular vote, but and Democrats cry about that. And they should. The Electoral College is terrible. It's a disaster. But he won the Electoral College. He won it, right? So you give him that for sure. And he's great at marketing. Just blah, 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 Trump, 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 Trump. And Democrats don't get it. They're such knuckleheads. They're like, oh, if we have an accomplishment, we should whisper about it on NPR. No, you should scream at the top of your lungs like Trump does. But having said that, bankrupt six times, got clowned in 2020, and he's been crying about it ever since like a little spoiled brat. Had to have his dad get him into the schools that he got into. He hides his grades from high school and college because he's a loser. He's a spoiled little baby. He blew $413 million from his dad. Blew it all. Then he got $400 million from Apprentice. Why was that successful? Because of the producers. I know the producers on that show. They had to treat him like a baby. Hey, baby, come here. Baby, say yeah, this. The same okay. producers have done shows that flopped. Yeah. You know, no, hard but they've also the same producers who did other it number one hits. It is so hard to keep a number one hit show for okay, 15 but, years. Okay, but if you want to say Trump yeah. is entertaining, I don't I don't disagree with you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's pretty good at marketing, right? And he says these terrible things, but, they're, but people laugh, right? And I get it. And you know, his giant strength that people don't talk about, and, and no one in mainstream media acknowledges this, he doesn't look fake. 
I think he's a con man and he's been a con man his whole life, but he looks authentic because he doesn't go off a prompter. And you think, well, that's a real guy. He's saying crazy crap that nobody else would say. And all the other politicians look like actors. They, they're robots. They come out like Pete Buttigieg came out from a factory. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Gavin Newsom, but also DeSantis and McConnell. They're all robots. They come in, I will do this. I have been told by my donors, this is great policy, right? And so he has the feelings of authenticity. But if you look at his records, like you say, great in real estate, he's awful in real estate. In Atlantic City, he built three casinos. Everybody said, you're going to cannibalize it, you moron, your own business. And you know, one of his top assistants says he just likes his name and lights. So he'd like to see Trump, Trump, Trump in Atlantic City, and he bankrupted all three because he sucks Cenk, at you're business. A, you're, you're, you, you think you're good in business? Yes. You think you're good in business? Yes. Shank. Yes. Seriously. 100%. Okay, so when's your birthday, by the way? What month's your birthday? Let me see. March. Uh, March 30, 21st. It's okay. Yeah. You're, Pis uh, you're Pisces. Aries, beginning of Aries. Oh, you made it to Aries. Yes. Interesting. My dad's in Aries. I get along with Aries. Okay. So uh, he's on April 10th. You're so you barely are in Aries, though, by one day, uh, right? Beginning of uh, the Interesting. Of spring. Okay. You yeah. made it. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 okay. Bro, when you say that, you know, for me, I feel like if there's anybody that would be like a pro-Trump guy in a confusing way would be you. Okay. I know this is like, this guy's lost his mind. You have no clue who the F I am. Are you crazy? There's no way. <laughs> because um, in business, you know, do you have a perfect record with business? No. Do I have a perfect record with business? No. Nobody does. Yeah. Nobody does. But, you know, uh, has Trump taken it to certain levels that his dad didn't take it? Yeah, that's not easy to do. His dad wasn't as famous as this guy got. It's a very hard work to do that. There's a lot of kids that are spoiled kids from a rich father who don't do shit with the money and they become crack addicts and they become drug addicts and they hire prostitutes all the time and they go try to sell their laptops at different places and they you know i'm not saying about anybody specific but this Just happens everyone like saying it about some no, 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 this kind of stuff yeah. does happen every once in a while right <laughs> there, there is there's there's stories like that that you hear about it's like oh okay this guy's going to make it this guy's not going to make it so there is something about him one can say john f kennedy became a president because of his father joseph kennedy because that had a okay fine and joseph kennedy became successful because his dad had all this money from okay fine okay there's some of it that's got to go to the credit of the individual. Perfect. So if I listened to you and I didn't know who you were, okay, and I just came to America and I've heard about this Trump guy and I've heard about the Biden guy and I'm listening to you, I would say that guy is angry at Trump for what reason? He's either envious of Trump. He's angry with him because he sounds personal. He doesn't sound like he's being reasonable. He sounds he's being personal when he's attacking Trump. And I, I think he loses credibility a little bit for taking the angle that he does. Because you're coming from a place of saying this guy got this much money and he became rich because of this and he's a loser, he's a this. The guy was on Oprah Winfrey, 1988. And Oprah Winfrey says, so hey, uh, you sound like somebody that's going to, you've seen this, you sound like somebody that's going to run for office one day. No, no. Well, do you have any plans? No, but if I ever did, I would win. Who the hell says that? That's like a Babe Ruth call. You know, when you say, I'm going to hit the home run, you point the finger and you hit it. His book crushed it. His show crushed it. He crushed it in New York going up against all these other guys. He's done good with women. He's done good with his kids. He became a president. I don't know. Love him or hate him. I don't have a relationship with him. So there is not like a... I'm defending this guy. I'm doing it. We're in Florida because of DeSantis. We came here because all of a sudden DeSantis, I'm watching him market. I'm like, dude, you're not even out there doing your part marketing. Finally, he's getting to it, and now everybody's asking a question that they shouldn't be asking you, which is what? Why are you so down on the polls? Can you make a comeback? You should have never allowed these people to ask that question if you would have played offense earlier. But when you see a winner and complicated individual, a misunderstood individual, I don't know how many people you're going to put on the list as Trump. In, in the history of America, by the way, whether you love this guy or hate this guy, it's kind of tough to, you know, uh, demonize the guy's resume. And no, I know you like no, to do this, but no. it's kind of tough to do it. Not remotely tough. You think so? So, Pat, look, 
I'm giving you nuanced answers. I'm telling you that he's anti-establishment in some ways, sure. and that's part yeah. of his appeal. Right. I'm telling you he's good at marketing, and almost everything you're saying is he's good at marketing. He was good on TV. He was good at marketing his book. He went on Oprah. It's marketing, marketing, marketing. No, you said he wanted two things, and what I did is I showed his resume. That's more than two things. It's it's a bunch of different things that he wanted. That was my defense to you saying he only wanted two things, right. not the marketing so, side. Pat, imagine, yeah. imagine mm -hmm. if your dad gave you $413 million. You Which know, we don't we don't know that's the number, but okay. you're saying four hundred thirteen million. Yeah, New York Times dollars. says this was four hundred thirteen. Uh, New York million. Times also said science. New York is, Times. You know, <laughs> I have to take the New York COVID Times has also lied about me. I understand. Yeah. Okay, but. But his dad was enormously wealthy. And There's gave no question him an about it. Enormous fortune, yeah, and which he lost. Four thirteen by today's standards, or what was it back then? What was the actual? Fourteen million. I, is, is okay, the I thought it was like no, 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 no way. It's it's look. I forget. I think it's by today's standards, but I'm not positive. Yeah, it okay, could have been four. But it's not back fourteen then. to four hundred and thirteen. That's not how inflation works. So, but Pat, if they gave it to you, you'd probably be worth four billion by now. I don't know okay? about that. Yeah, come I don't on, know, no, it's I, such an enormous Cenk, advantage. Cenk, do you have kids? Cenk, do you have kids? Yes. What are you talking about, bro? Let me let me unpack this for you. So one of the hardest things to do is to be the pastor's kid. Are you are you kidding me? Like the pastor's kid is like, so you got to be a virgin till you get married. I'm going to go freaking smoke weed. Dude. I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of this pressure. Are you going to be this? No, I'm not, bro. I, just, I remember we're at a church. We're going to the church. The pastor's son, you ready for this? This is a pastor loved by so many people. His son gets arrested across the street from the church with a crew of players taking stuff from Best Buy. And the pastor's going to come on Sunday and preach in front of 20,000 members. So the point I'm trying to make to you is nobody wants to be Michael Jordan's kids. Nobody wants to be Brady's kid. The level of pressure and scrutiny of wanting to do that. Trust me, I understand the level of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, influence and additional cards and stuff that you can get. But we did a we did a, a, a research on uh, uh, a generational wealth. I got kids, and I'm trying to see how do I set it up for my kids to get my wealth without them being spoiled. Okay, so it's something that's yeah. important to me. I kind of want to figure out. I'm in a community. A couple families do it right. So I said, let me go out and study, study this to see how to do it right. Vanderbilt's. Do you know how long the wealth lasted? This guy was the richest man in the world, giving money back to the country. You know how much, how, how many generations money lasted? Usually, two generations. It, it, usually it's always two the generations. Only gener the only wealth ge that lasted seven generations is the Medici. Medici lasted seven generations. It's the only one. Every mm -hmm. other one is two, three. Rockefeller's still on four right now. They're not even on five, six, seven. So, so the notion when you're saying, like, if you, you would have had a head start, bro, a lot of people, you give them money, they become spoiled little brats. I had a guy I interviewed who lives in Seattle. You know what his job was? He managed the Templeton family, 16 grandkids. You know what his job was? His job was he was the guy dealing with billionaire families. And the reason why Seattle, you know why Seattle, Amazon, Microsoft, all those guys, all these, he's, there's all these billionaires and guys that are worth $100 million that no one knows who they are. He's worth $28 million, $148 million, $300 million. Yes, sir. They're kids, drug addicts. He says, my biggest job with these guys was to make sure they didn't do drugs. They didn't do alcohol. So, but the, you know what the biggest problem with me was? He says, what's that? They typically came to me too late. They came to me too late that I couldn't do anything about it. Dude, this guy's never drank alcohol. He's never done drugs. He doesn't do that. I mean, that kind of stuff to come from that amount of opportunity to screw up. Dude, that's not easy to do. Six bankruptcies. I mean, just when you run when you no look. People make mistakes in business. If you're not making mistakes, you're not really a businessman. Like, there's no question. I get it, right? And I'd cut them a, a lot of. I'd cut any business person a lot of slack for. You got a bankruptcy. You got two bankruptcies. It happens, brother. Six. He's never had a successful business. Trump stakes, Trump water, Trump uh, it, it, the casinos. You can't name a successful right. business. He ran, he bought an airplane uh, company. Instant. He put gold seats in a. In an economy uh, uh, airline and immediately went bankrupt. He's terrible at business. But look, if you say it's personal, well, number one, it isn't because I'm giving you nuance on both sides, okay? But having said that, look, it got personal when he uh, lost the election in 2020 and said, ah, screw it. I'm going to try a coup. I'm going to do these fake elector scheme. I'm going to try to rob America of its democracy just so I can stay in power. Screw that guy. And if any of you are voting for that guy who's totally un-American who betrayed this country, 
You're nuts, and he won't ever leave office. He's a wannabe dictator. He always praises dictators, whether it's Xi in China, whether it's Kim Jong-un in North Korea, Putin. He's always saying, oh, they get all the applause when they walk in. No one is allowed to disagree with them. And then freedom, freedom, my ass. He hates freedom. He wants to take away everyone's freedom so that all the power goes to him, okay? So, no, Pat, look, you, you can— I'm not laughing at you. It's entertaining what you're saying, and— And, and it's 100% true. I, I can see— Okay, so let me ask you a different question. Who do you trust more, him or Biden? I don't trust either one of them. It's okay, not about trust. Fair. Okay, so, so so who do you who do you see more? If your choices are the two guys right now, are you going to sit this one out? Oh no way! I'm going to vote Biden. Because, okay, so because I want another election. I don't want. I don't. Okay. If you put Trump back in yeah. charge, there's at least a fifty percent chance we're never going to have another so, election. So let me ask you this other question to to the people who, when Hillary lost, you've seen that clip when Hillary lost. It's the it's one of the greatest. Uh, Bill Burr said it best when he was on Conan O'Brien. He says, look, man, forget about the the uh, Olympics, Russia, U.S., forget about, you know, the home run, forget about this. He says, dude, this guy beat Hillary Clinton. It's like the people lost their minds, right? What did Hillary Clinton do for four years? You know what she did. She went around campaigning around what? Russia they stole the election. They stole the election. They stole the election. They, and we... What do you mean before, Pat? Before she was doing it with all that bullshit. Yeah. But no, it, but they didn't say that she, it, he physically stole the election. There's a giant, giant difference. Saying, oh, boo-hoo, which he did, of like, oh, ma, the Russians in, in, interfered in the election, which, by the way, they did, but not enough to make the difference, okay? But that's just crying after your loss. What, Whereas Donald right. Trump, no, said, had a scheme of fake electors yeah. to do a goddamn okay. coup. So I got a follow up Hillary did not do and that. She did and I concede. concede Hillary. And she did oh, actually oh, concede. Wait, wait, hold on. She conceded. So, well, here's my, here's my question, Jenk. So let's say you are Trump. You're, you're, you, you legitimately win the election. You Except, fight. You fight. Did. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Don't use the word legitimately. Time I mean, out, yeah. time out. You won in 2016. You find out all these years later with the Durham report and all that shit that not only did Hillary help set up lawyers, the dossier, everything... How can you blame somebody for not trusting the FBI or the like everything in 2000? That's a good question. That's I good wouldn't question. trust. Any, I wouldn't. Can I answer? Yeah, I wouldn't trust anybody. Okay, so look, when he asked for a recount, I said hell yeah. When he asked for a hand recount, I said hell yeah. Why? Progressives yeah. have been asking to verify elections for decades now, right? But when uh, some Bernie supporters back in 2016 said, "Oh no, Hillary stole the election from Bernie in the primaries," I said. Look, when you're talking about how they set up the debates, how they funneled uh, money from the donors through the state yeah. uh, Democratic parties, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, But if you're talking about evidence of rigged elections, you have to come with freaking evidence. And our side didn't. So I said, no, I don't care how angry you get at me. Hillary Clinton did not steal the votes in those in those elections in the primary in 2016. So when you get to Trump, did if he says, hey, I want to recount, great. But they did. They recounted three times. They did hand recounts. Then they went to court 60 times. And guys, this is definitive. He couldn't present one piece of evidence. He had 60 shots at it. You know why he couldn't present one piece of evidence? Because there is no evidence. There is no evidence, and he knows it. He made it up from day one. He's a giant liar. He's always been a pathological liar. And he came in and was like, oh, I don't like losing. I don't like losing. I don't like it. Oh, I think they stole it. They made up 7 million votes. Hugo Chavez, they blamed the Kraken. All these insane donkeys or mules or whatever the hell. Get out of here. Hey. All of MAGA, show me one piece of evidence in court, not BS. Oh, I said it on TV, doesn't that count? No, all you ever do is lie on TV. All the politicians lie on TV. Go to court, show the evidence. Until then, shut up and stop trying to steal elections and stop hating America. America is about elections, it's about democracy. So, so, by the way, you know, I will say this to you if you could. Uh, uh, I will say this to you. So, you're right when it comes down to. Uh, if you think the other person is guilty, show the proof and go through it. That's, That's the it. whole thing with innocent until proven guilty. Totally get it. But, bro, the mainstream media ran for three and a half years that Trump, Russia, all that stuff. I'm not saying you. I'm saying mainstream media ran against them three and a half years every day. 
This guy thought Russia got him elected. I mean, people that we know, smart guys. But, brother, mainstream media hates progressives. They've destroyed our movement. Oh, I'm not. So I'm not, am I I'm saying, not, oh, I, we won the election? But, but, no. I, but I said to you, I said, in, not, in, not you. I right. said, not you. I said mainstream media. But okay. my point is, Pat, you got to play the uh, playing field. That's true for me. That's true for Trump. Sure. Right? So, yes, mainstream media hates him. Yes, they did propaganda, propaganda against him yeah. for three and a half yeah. years. But that's the playing field, right? Totally get it. No, it's totally fine. They have the edge. Listen, Republicans, if they want to have that, go buy some Repub go buy some uh, media companies and compete directly. Yeah. Musk is buying Twitter. Great. Go at it. Play your game if you're going to do what you're going to do. And Murdoch influences elections more than anyone else. Murdoch yeah. is right now more at a whole different place. He's no longer. He's not yeah, a Team Trump guy. Anymore, you know that, bro. He's not. But where I was going to this, the following. Okay. So f uh, the part for me that got confusing was the following. Okay. Do you remember during COVID, uh, I had a lady named Judy Mikovits on who used to work with uh, uh, Sh -Sh -Sh Fauci in 1980s with the AIDS thing. Oh, my God. It was like, boom, 2 million views taken down. Short clip, strike, strike. What? Okay, let's interview this other guy. Boom. Strike, strike. Okay. All right. Boom. Strike. They took like 40 of our videos down during COVID. And we kept doing the interviews, and we were not like, well, this is 5G. Remember the whole 5G thing? Like, it, that fizzled out very quickly. Everybody thought it was a 5G. But there was a community that was like, well, this is what's going on. Here's what they're doing. This is what they're doing. Okay, cool. You know, we're like, all right, let's kind of take a look at to see what's going on. Election claims. Yeah, this is what they did. You know, the drop and da ba 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 Okay. Yeah, election fraud has been going on for a long time. Okay, this ain't anything new. It was something known for Democrats that would do a lot with John F. Kennedy, Dewey, all this stuff. And it's been going on for many, many years. Great. Okay, they're doing that. But if you put up any clips disputing it, guess what? You were getting strikes, and they were taking those videos down. Then two, three months ago, YouTube comes out and saying, moving forward, we're no longer taking those videos down. They can stay up, okay? Why would YouTube do that? Why would YouTube not allow it for two and a half years and all of a sudden YouTube, can you pull up that clip on YouTube, change our guidelines on election claim or whatever? Like, now moving forward, we're not going to take it down and we're changing our guidelines for it. So I'm not saying one or the other, but did YouTube behind closed doors, are they worried about a Twitter files coming out? Are they worried about, yeah, YouTube changes policy to allow false claims about past U.S. presidential elections. YouTube will stop removing content that falsely claims the 2020 election or other past U.S. presidential elections were marred by widespread fraud, errors, or glitches. The platform announced Friday. This is what, AP News? Less than two months ago. It's exactly two months ago, you know, is when they put it up. Why would they do that? I have a good theory. I, I'm curious. I want to hear your theory why they would do yeah, that. Yeah, because now every Republican believes it. Like eight out of ten Republicans believe it. So what are they going to do, ban every Republican? So I think they got to a point where they're like, we give up. Uh, every right-winger believes this nonsense that's totally made up. So we can't ban all the right-wingers, so we just got to let them say it. How much of it is, well, you know, these guys on Rumble are kind of... Picking up some Not steam. Not really. Rumble no? sucks. It's got no steam at all. Steven Crowder's career is dead. Everybody who's on Rumble is dead. Steven Crowder's career is dead. Of course. He went to Rumble. Three people watched there. That's a <laughs> terrible mistake. He should have taken the Daily Wire deal. I Forget politics, right? Daily Wire offers him $50 million. He could have stayed on YouTube. He would have been relevant and had more money. It was a disastrous decision by him. Look, I'm happy to be wrong. If it turns out Rumble mm -hmm. does great going forward, I'll come back and say I was wrong. But I, I'm Who telling you, top anybody guys on Rumble, Rumble right now? Obviously, Fresh and Fit is on there. Sneak is on there. Not that I mean, they're in look, the political you'll find two or three people who are getting views. Yeah. But on YouTube, the whole world is getting views. Right. Right? YouTube has taken over the planet. And that's part of why they're doing this. Because they're like, what are we going to do? Not allow any right-wingers on YouTube? But if you guys say they're a little worried about competition, fair. No problem. I'm sure they consider that their business people. So we got two theories so far. Your theory is 8 out of 10 Republicans believe the election was fraud. So that's like, hey, let's not lose a Republican. Republicans buy shoes as well. That's kind of like your angle, what you're taking. You're saying Rumble's giving them competition. Maybe that's it. Maybe let's add Twitter in it because Twitter's eventually going to be doing video. So I think actually Twitter's a bigger fear to YouTube than Rumble is. Probably. No matter how much they trash Twitter. Twitter, I think Twitter's going to eventually figure that. I don't think Elon's, Elon's a guy that gives up easily. It's called he, X now. Let's have, let's have I, a little respect. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to say I'm going to yeah. X, uh, uh, go read my X. I just exceeded something. It's kind of weird, right? So, but I we'll adjust to it. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll adjust to it. But to me, that was kind of weird when they did that. And, and, you know, my other theory was maybe, you know, the whole, like I said earlier, Twitter files information came out. 
how many people on the uh, Fauci side were, you know, embarrassed on what's going on. Even Rand Paul came out here and announces official criminal referral Fauci COVID is a lie. Uh, page 11. I'll read this story here, Rob, if you want to pull it up. Senator Rand Paul made an official criminal referral to the Department of Justice accusing Dr. Anthony Fauci of perjury. Uh, 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 perjury, perjury uh, during this testimony about COVID-19 and funding gain-of-function research in China's Wuhan lab. Paul called for an uh, investigation into Fauci's n- uh, knowledge of dangerous virus research. Fauci, Fauci faced criticism after release emails revealed he knew about gain-of-function research in Wuhan lab. Despite denying it during previous testimony, the Government uh, uh, Accountability Office confirmed Wuhan Institute of Virology and Wuhan University received NIH funding for coronavirus research. The debate over COVID-19 origin continues with some officials uh, suspecting a lab leak theory due to the Wuhan lab's location and research history, while other, others support a natural spillover event uh, uh, from animals. So are they afraid that maybe a YouTube files is going to come out and they're going to show behind closed doors communication with Fauci about not allowing those types of videos to be shown? I don't know. Are, they, uh, are Twitter, YouTube files going to come out, email saying, hey, you can't let them show these clips about, you know, what they're doing with the election and what happened to it and those videos with this mules and all this stuff. You can't let them. Those guys got to be taken down. This is creating too much momentum. Maybe. Could it be that uh, they uh, were afraid for maybe – additional stuff to come out with communication with Biden. I don't know. Like, I remember when they changed. One of my favorite things about YouTube, I don't know if you like this or not, I loved it, when you could give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah. You know, I love the thumbs down thing because I'm like, we would do a video. I'm like, damn, I thought this was a good video. They hated this video. You know, know, the ratios was so bad with thumbs down to thumbs up. Biden's videos, I don't know if you remember this, okay? Dude, when he was campaigning, it was like 28,000 likes. 600,000 dislikes. Yeah, it was bad. Like every video's <laughs> like it was bad. to dislike ratio was astronomical. It got so bad, and out of nowhere during election, they said uh, due to mental and anxiety for kids, we're going to get rid of thumbs down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So feelings yeah. over logic. Yeah. Well. So, you, you know, some of this stuff maybe for me where YouTube is sitting there saying Twitter's becoming real competition. We the last thing we want is the government to start investigating some of our emails on what we did and what if this stuff leaks. Yeah, that could and, be a theory. And, and check, if, if we're going to talk about cheating, the FBI working with the White House, and or, or just do to, to censor stories and don't put out. You know, the, the how many was it? Eighty percent of voters or, or seventy five were like, if we knew about the Hunter Biden laptop and what. By everything that's coming out right now, we wouldn't have voted for him. That's if we're gonna talk about interference and cheating, the guy that's sitting in right now, and I know you're not a, you're not a fan. Nope, I don't think anybody at this point is. But that is hands down cheating with with the Department of Justice. And now it's it's like man, eh, nobody nobody really cares. But I mean, look, you can make the same argument for if James Comey hadn't come out with the Anthony Weiner laptop, Hillary Clinton wins, right? And so did they rig the election in favor of Donald Trump the first time around? So there's a ton of factors that go into an election. In terms of YouTube, uh, I, I think they mainly took it away for like political correctness slash mental health reasons, et cetera. When I'm, but I don't mean it for Biden. I mean it like kids these days are very upset if anyone does a thumbs down. Who cares? They need that. No, because they care about kids because that's a huge, huge part of their audience. But in terms of Biden, of course he gets 600,000 dislikes. Why? Two reasons. Number one, he's a fake politician and people don't like fake politicians on YouTube. And number two, because the Republican troll army is gigantic. They like the Democratic trolls are barely exist. Although now on the radical left, there's some, right? But but the right wing is all trolls. So they're, of course, yeah. they're good. but those are, look, Pat, I know YouTube and it's a giant business. Those are minuscule concerns for them. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.